Hello, everyone. So I'm Ben. Um, I would just start with a quick introduction of who am I and what I'm doing at In Marketing We Trust. So I've been working for In Marketing We Trust for almost four years now. So I'm head of the um, stream, which is called Measure. And the objective of Measure is um, working around the data strategy, measurement plan, implementation of tracking, governance, consulting and reporting, and a bit of training. Um, I'm French, but I'm living in Vietnam right now. Um, and today's presentation will be focusing on measurement plan. So what matters um, to track and how we collect it. But before we, we, we jump straight into what is a measurement plan and how we build it, I would like to talk about my favorite series, which is um, Doctor Who. Um, so I, I've been watching that series for many years right now. And um, the story is about um, Time Lord, which is who is an alien, and he's exploring the universe in a time traveling space machine. And he has, he has like few companions with him, like few friends, and he's traveling and he's just going from places to places, time to time, and just help people in needs, basically. So every episode starts with the doctor and his friends landing on a new planet or a new place in the universe that is facing a problem. And basically what he needs to do is to understand the situation, question everything. He never makes any assumptions of what he knows or he doesn't. Neither any assumptions on why the people are acting that way, like bad or good way. And he analyzes the environment, use his tool. He asks thousands of questions. He asks sometimes a bit crazy and odd but he always ends up saving the world. And once in a while, um, when he gets hurt, he needs to regenerate. So basically here you can see like the, the pictures of all the doctors. So every time that he gets too much hurt, he will have to change body. So here you have like the 13 doctors that have been uh, through the series. And the thing is to put in parallel with, with, with my life, it's just like, I want to be Doctor Who. It's like really cool. It's just like my model, professionally speaking, but also personally speaking. And I love to think that one day I will be as cool as the doctor. So as a data analyst, the parallel is that sometimes we have to act a bit weird, according to others, because I'm like so obsessed about data collection, uh, privacy, um, that I can be acting like a weirdo. Um, but I, we often need to solve problems without making any assumptions on how to solve it or how to use it. We shouldn't be too confident on what we know and don't know. We need to find it out, figure, it out, figure out the solution by asking the different teams we are working on or with the different colleagues we, we're working. And sometimes we get hurt because the solution that we proposed was not the right one or the, the, the people for who delivered uh, uh, don't agree with the approach, but we still need to go back to our fit, propose an alternative and find the best solution. So as a data analyst, and especially in, in my stream, my only objective is to answer questions on my business. So basically save the universe, like Dr. Holmes. So today, um, what we would do is like, I would start with a quick introduction on data governance to, to give a big of a background of why do we need a measurement plan? Because to me, measurement plan is the first phase of getting a sort of governance in the data collection. Um, then we'll go uh, through the measurement plan how we build it. So from, uh, we just go stage by stage by giving you examples. And once we have the full measurement plan, we need to decide on what's really important um, and just build batches in order to implement the tracking that we need. And then I will conclude. So let's start with data governance. So this is a big word. Um, the official definition would be the exercise of the authority of and control of the the management of any data assets. So here you have like the, the, the word cloud with the eight concepts that's, that are included into data governance. Today we are going to focus on Google Analytics data 
obviously. So we're talking about the measurement plan for Google Analytics. But any data collection that you have should uh, have a sort of, of, of governance. And to me, there are three, the three most important points will be quality, privacy, and security. So privacy for me as, as, as a data analyst, that's just the, the, the keystone of any sort of data collection that I'm doing. I have to be ethical and I have to, I must not collect any data without the consent. And, and now we, I suppose that everyone heard about the GDPR and more and more of that type of regulations will go because we used to be not as ethical as we should have as marketers. Um, so privacy to me is, is, is really the most important one. Second would be security because any data that you collect should be secured. And then the third one would be um, the quality because it will directly impact your decisions. And unfortunately, bad data is just looking as, as good data. And the worst thing that you could the worst thing that could happen is to take wrong decisions just because of the errors that you, you see. So the question here is, do you have any sort of data governance? Do you have anything in place within your organization that ensures that every single point here is kind of covered? And who is responsible for it? So there is no unique solution and, or answer, but every business should have their own approach and their own governance when it comes to digital, digital analytics. Um, so the, this is a, a study that has been done uh, in 2017. So there are around like 800 professionals, not just on travel, but all industries, uh, managers, directors, analysts, statistician, um, any type of organization. And they just ask on, do you have any sort of governance? And unfortunately, only 25%, a bit less than 25, have a governance. And, and when we asked people, when they asked people on why they didn't have any, the main reason was politics. So around, like, within the organization itself, the, the different politics between the different teams, then the lack of resources or the limited understanding of the value. But the thing is that without this type of governance, you have, it impacts directly the quality of the digital analytics and, and of, of what you are measuring. So this is another analysis that has been done by Brian, Brian Clifton. So if you don't know him, just Google him. He has like plenty of good books and a really good blog. Um, and on this analysis, so he, he reviewed like 75 clients of his. And the sad reality is that um, one in five has a PII issue. So PII is like information that enables you to identify the user. So personal, uh, personally identifiable information. And the thing is, um, most of the time, like people are collecting this kind of information, but without even knowing it. Uh, so it could be like an email, a postcode, a family name, a name, whatever that enables you to identify the user. The thing is, it's against Google Analytics policies. So if Google, was to discover that breach in that policy, they could terminate your account. So one, of, one in five of the accounts he reviewed could have been terminated in, in just in a second if Google was to, to realize that. And the second point is about conversions. So when I talk conversions is that, do we measure, for instance, form submissions? So like lead, lead acquisition and uh, purchase. And only like 25% uh, had were properly tracking that. And unless you have um, conversion tracking, you cannot really action anything because you can't report on the performances of that campaign or that campaign of that channel on that channel. And the last point is um, tracked campaigns. So anything that involves manual tagging, so meaning email or social media campaigns, um, and only. 20%, a bit less than 20% were properly tracked. So it means that you have some campaigns running, but you actually cannot identify them in Google Analytics because of the errors in the tagging. So data quality is an investment. So you need to know 
what you are collecting and you need to know if your data is solid or you need to eradicate your doubts. So the problem is not so much on having errors in your tracking, but, but not knowing that there is one. Because if you don't know that it's an error or that, there, that the data is, is biased, then you may take decisions that will have negative impacts on your business. So we need to question, we need to challenge the current analytics implementation, uncover the gaps or the error in the current measurement. So to be able to solve a lot of those problems, to me, the first thing in, in, when we enter the data governance world is by starting to put together the measurement plan. So let's not forget of why we are trying to collect data. The only objective is to get impact, impact on your business. So the data is useless unless you can action it to make biz your business better. So we need to make sense of, of, of the data. And to be able to do that, you need to juggle between those three, which is the business expertise, the tool expertise, and the maturity. So we need to figure out a good strategy to go on, but you need also to be really confident with the tools that you are using to make sure that you're actually using the right tool but you also have to get some maturity in terms of communication, participation, transparency within your team and within everyone you are working with. And the merge of those three will be how you get impact on your business. So let's take um, one step back in terms of digital analytics. Uh, this is um, something that was presented. So if you don't know that book, I put the, the reference on the, on the top of the slide. That's literally my Bible. It's a Bible because like they have like a 600 pages. Um, it's anything you need to know about Google Analytics. They have like good case studies, examples, what to do, how to do, and even frameworks. And this is one of the framework that they present in the book, which is the optimization. So the objective is still to have impact. But to get there, before we get impacts, we, get to, we need to have the basics right. So we need to start with getting a strategy and then having the right implement, I mean, based on the strategy, we know what to implement. So we go in the implementation phase, then the reporting, because we need the right dashboard, the right custom report, so we can make sense of the data through our analysis. And from there, we can emit hypothesis on what we want to optimize on the website. So what tests we will run through our CRO project. And with all of that, we can finally get impact. So the thing is, unless you have the collection right, your data right, or at least that you have enough knowledge on what you have, you cannot do the cool stuff. So you start by collecting, then aggregating, segmenting, integrating, visualizing, interpreting, and then the impact. But unless you have the, the, the basis right, you may just be a loser. So I don't know for who know um, Jenga, I've been playing that for, for a while. I'm more on the loser side on Jenga, but more winner side on the uh, data collection. But the, I have a quote from Avinash Koshik. So for those who don't know Avinash Koshik, uh, I just Google him. He's like the, the, the master of digital analytics and he has created the measurement plan. And he said that the only difference between winners and losers when it comes to web analytics is that the winners, before they think of a tool or data, they think strategy and they go with a well-structured digital marketing measurement model, which is the measurement plan, while the losers, well, they don't. So we need to start before jumping into data and playing with Google Analytics, we need to take one step back and think of what is important to our business. And that goes through the creation of the measurement plan. So the measurement plan, there are five main components. First is you need to identify the business objectives. Then for each objective, you will define your goals. To be able to report on those goals, you need to define KPIs with targets. So KPIs, key performance indicators, which are metrics that you can measure against targets. So targets also defined in time. So let's say you define for the next quarter or semester, depends on, on, on 
how you, you, you work, and then did identify the segments. So identify the dimensions that will enable you to break down your data to be able to report on what succeeded versus what failed. So it could be on attributes on people, on behavior, on the source, on... So you need to define and put on paper all of that. So the measurement plan is not just a static thing. It's something that is, 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 is alive. And you need to go start by the, you start by the definition of the measurement plan, document it. I put it as a standalone phase because to me, the documentation and the sharing and getting everyone within your team on board is really important. And then from there, you create the implementation plan, which is the specification of your measurement. Then you do um, the implementation itself, and then you maintain and refine. The point here is that a measurement plan is not one standalone um, design or specification that you will have to do. It's something that you will have to rethink every quarter or semester based on the changes of your website or based on the change of the strategy that you apply on your on your business. So the minimum to do like from the definition to the implementation would be like for very easy websites, such as a blog, would be around two weeks. So just figuring out what you want, what you need, the, the, the goals, the KPIs, the segments, everything. And then the implementation itself would take around two weeks. But if it's a bit more complex, where you have like form submissions or particular integrations with the CRM, or you have um, even e-commerce, it's an e-commerce website, then you will require some data layers or implementation, more technical implementations, and then the loop might be three weeks to four weeks. But when, it, when your measurement plan is too complex, then you will have to break it into batches and do several runs. But we go on that a bit later. So how do we start this creation of this measurement plan? So the first thing is you need to figure out what you don't know. Because if we focus on what we already know, we just might lose a big chunk of what is really important to our business. So try to figure out what you know you know. That's the assumptions. I know that I measure that. I know that. The, yeah. Then you have what you know that you don't know. That's the gaps. That's what you will implement to, to fill that lack of data. Then you have what you don't know that you know, that's the test, it's knowledge. So there are lots that is already included in Google Analytics, a lot of reports, a lot of dimensions that you may not even be aware of. So I invite everyone to really know the tools that you are using, because sometimes we just redo an implementation that already exists. And then they don't know what we, the, the, we don't know what we don't know. So that's the discovery phase. And the only way of knowing what you don't know is actually to ask people. So go around and, and it's not an easy exercise, obviously, but go around, discuss with all the team that are involved in it. And if you are alone, well, just take one step back and figure out really what matters rather than how to do it. Strategy first before on how the, we collect. But that's where you need to put yourself in a four years old child, basically saying like, why, 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 why? Asking questions of, of on, on everything. Why we need that? Who is responsible for that prediction? What, what is that particular metric? What do we need it? Where can I find this information? And by asking those, so the, the, the five whys and the H, you will be able to just cover the uncovered. But you are not alone. So figure out also what matters to the other. Reach out to different teams. It could be the IT, the PPC team, the SEO team, your agency, or simply your colleague or your boss, and make sure that you know on what is important to them, what their own KPIs, how do they report on their performances, how, how, how they work, and what they do, the tools that they are using, so you can include that in your own measurement plan. And the good example that I have with that is that I worked with one of my clients and we were like one-to-one. -one. So I had only one point of contact 
and we built the measurement plan together, which was great on paper. We're really happy with it. I defined the, the, the conventions that they should be using, the tagging that they should be using for emails, for social, for Google Ads, for everything, so we could measure everything in Google Ads. But it happened, happened that this person didn't share it with the rest of the team. So he was on board, but the rest of the people didn't know. And therefore, they forgot to tag emails. And after a while, we realized that, so they were sending more than 100,000 emails a month. But because of that lack of tagging, we could not see or report on how well the newsletter were performing. So that's really important to just get everyone on board. So by including them while you are defining this measurement plan, is to me really important because they will share and agree on the strategy you are going with. So <clears throat> the first step will be to define your objectives. Dumb objectives. So dumb stand for doable, understandable, manageable, and beneficial. But it also stands for dumb as keep it simple. So always apply the KISS, KISS principle, which is keep it simple, stupid, and make sure that you don't overdo it. So what I usually uh, recommend is to go and see what others do. So your business will fall under one of those categories. So either you are e-commerce, lead generation, brand awareness, support, or content publisher. But I in marketing we trust. What we do is we always end up classifying under those three um, objectives, which are make money, save money, make them happy. So make more revenue, reduce the cost, and improve loyalty. And by having those three buckets, we always end up covering the majority of what we should be measuring. Then the next step, once you have your objectives, is to define the goals for each of them. So that's where the strategy goes goes in because it really, really depends on what you feel confident with and what you are targeting as a business. So here the example is to increase revenue, you could uh, either increase the number of bookings you have on your site or you could increase the average price of each booking, like the average revenue you are generating by pushing people on adding add-ons on, on every purchase that they are making. On reducing cost, you could either decrease the cost per acquisition, so it's more at a, a campaign um, optimization, or you could increase the conversion rate, which is more an optimization of your website or of your landing page to push people to convert better. But both have the same impact, which is reducing your cost. So for each of the objectives that you are defining in your measurement plan, I really invite you to always to to different, very different perspective, different strategy, um, so you can play and, and, and see what's working the best. So once you have the objective and then the goals, you go into your KPIs and the target. So I will just take uh, an example for like revenue. So if you want to increase the number of bookings, well, you need to know on how many bookings you've done. So somehow you need to collect and, and, and count the number of transactions that you are having. But you also need to know the revenue. So you have those two metrics, transactions and revenue. And for each of them, you will put the KPI that you have. So for instance, here, it's just like random numbers. But let's say that next quarter, what I want is like in less than three months, I want to increase by 10% more revenue, my revenue year on year. And then for the booking, I want to increase $20 on each booking that is made. So this is the approach, that's my KPIs. And then the way on, on how I will action that to make that happen is really up to me and really up to the strategies that I have. So unless you know your business, unless you really know what you could do or not do, it will be really hard for you to, to define the real metrics KPIs that, that 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 can can be done and then on the improve loyalty so here i just gave the two goals that was uh, increase the number of people that subscribe to the newsletter 
or increase the number of interaction with social media. And so I need to track form submissions and also the number of comments, likes, shares. And then I put my metrics, my KPIs and targets on it. So once we have that, the last step will be the segment. So the segment is, is literally the, the, the dimensions that will enable you to break down your performance on a particular dimension. So for instance here, uh, when I, I, I want to report on revenue, I want to know which product is working better than the other. So unless I track the product dimension, I won't be able to see which product is driving most, most of my revenue. But I also need to know the traffic source, how people came to my site. So I can see if um, people coming from email are performing better than people coming from organic search or for particular companies. And it's even um, more applicable when we talk about reducing cost because reducing cost is directly related to your paid activity. So you have to know not only the source that is coming from AdWords or from Facebook PPC, but you, know, you need to know which campaign to know which one is working better than the other so you can spend the money on the right campaign. But you will also need the geography because you need to understand are Australian people buying more than New Zealand people? And then you can maybe action things on your campaigns based on, I don't know, like the wording that you could use on your campaign. So, so far, what you got is that you started by questioning everything. And then from there, after asking questions, thousands of questions to everyone and bothering everyone, you get a good understanding of what your business objectives were. You translated it into goals, into metrics, into KPIs, into dimensions that will enable you to report on every activity that you have. So that's great. And this is just an example of what could be measured on the website, just to give you ideas. So I just uh, split it into different categories here. So you have like the visibility. So to me, it's more like, well, obviously we need to know what pages have been seen by users. So I need to track page views, but I could also, for instance, if I'm a publisher, I would like to know if some parts of my content have been visible. So it can be like uh, ads, but it can be also particular elements in my page. So that's what we call the content visibility. Or I don't know if we have pop-ups or things. I want to know if people have seen my newsletter pop-up showing up. So I need element visibility also. But I can also measure interactions of the user. So uh, the scroll, how, how far they scroll within my page. Or if I am like um, uh, promoting destination or promoting uh, a, a partner, I will have to track the clicks on the, on, on the link to that, part, that, that, that external website, so the unbound links. But I could have also e brochures so we need to, to track downloads or social media interactions. If it's really just on the blog, for instance, that's where I have like the dwell time category, it would be, um, I could, could have one metric, which is the estimate estimated reading time for a particular page and then adjust, adjust my bounce rate based on how long my, the user actually spent on the page. Because let's say that after 30 seconds, I consider he engaged with the content. And then the goals, obviously purchases or subscriptions. So any form submission to me is important to, to track. So newsletter or contact form, because you actually get the uh, information about your lead, but you could also have other system like to track phone calls. And then we could also have qualitative uh, information, which is more like, this is all jar, like the, the logo here, where you could have like heat maps to understand where the people are, where they are clicking, session recordings. So you get to understand why people or how people go through your funnel. And then just asking directly 
questions to your users by polls or survey. And those qualitative data plus the quantitative data that you have in Google Analytics will enable you to understand how you can optimize your site. But the thing is, so here is everything that I want on my website. That's great. But we have always limited resources. So we need somehow to figure out a priority in what to implement. So how much can I get rid of? How much do I really need like tomorrow? I need to try to eliminate anything that is not mandatory. So I, I don't ask too much to my IT team. I need to try to define my minimal viable measurement plan. I need to keep it simple and stupid. The KISS principle again, keep it simple and stupid. I need to make sure that I have the bare minimum first and then I will upgrade. So that's where we need to, to break that full measurement into smaller batches that I can give to whoever will do the implementation. Because if it's tag implementation, maybe it will be your agency that is doing it. But if it's the data layer, or the CRM integration, it might be the IT team. So you have to adapt based on how much every team involved can help you. So by doing smaller changes, step by step, and by doing batch by batch, you will make sure that you build on the top of the existing and make it better and better and better and better. So how do we prioritize? So here, um, I would give you two framework that I use. There are plenty others on how to, you could prioritize. But the reality is that usually, so this is a hippo, the highest paid person opinion, which always have the biggest weight or important weight in what to put in terms of priority. The thing is, I don't want to end up just doing whatever this person is doing because he thinks it's important. I have to take in consideration his opinion, but I don't want to be the only criteria. So there are two frameworks that I'm using is the value cost matrix and then the pie framework. So the value, value cost, it's, it's, well, it's a simple matrix. So you can see here, I just do, it's, it shouldn't take long to make that. It's just like based on your own opinion, based on the hippo opinion that I put here, you just put a rate, a, a score on that particular feature or that particular metric or that particular dimension based on, on, on how you split your measurement plan and just put it in that matrix. So then you will have based on the value and the cost, you have those four zones and then it gives you briefly, quickly, an idea of what to do first. So do a first round. If you end up with a 90% in A, do a second one and until you reach the real minimal viable measurement plan that you need to be able to report properly on, on performances. So that's the, the, the easy approach where you just have like to put in your matrix and the other one would be uh, the Pi framework. So this is a framework that was done by a uh, wider funnel. They are conversion rate optimization. It's just um, you put score on potential importance and ease for, for each of those criteria. Then you multiply and divide by three. It gives you for each feature a score and the priority. And the HIPPO opinion, the highest paid opinion, will always... Uh, have some weight, but less because you have more criteria. So the potential will be, well, the voice of the client or uh, how much uh, value you are bringing. The importance will be based on the traffic volume or the cost on the impact, bottom line in impact. And the ease will be on the technical um, side of things. Is it easy to implement or is it something that will, uh, will face some political problems within the, 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 the company, the number of people involved. 
And once you have this list and you just put the score, it's the same. You can figure out what is your minimum variable um, measurement plan. So as a um, conclusion, first thing is um, don't make any assumptions on what you know and you don't know or even on what could be measured or what shouldn't be measured or what can't be measured. Just when you create your measurement plan, just go wide and wide so you get everything that you would need and then you can filter it out. But you, you need to ask everyone involved. So don't, don't be shy and act a bit weird and ask questions to everyone. Why do you need that? Why we do that? What is that? Where can I find this? Who is responsible for it? And by doing that and documenting it, it will actually help everyone understanding the whole environment you are working with. Then the tools that you are using, you need to use them for the right reason. So unless you train yourself on the tools that you are using, you won't be able to use it as, as, as they should. So Google Analytics is a complex tool and there are a lot of things that you might not even be aware of, of it. So just train yourself on, on what tool you use and you might figure out that Google Analytics is actually not the tool that is meant for you because of how your website works or based on the limited budget that you have or resources or what you are after. So don't make any assumptions on which one to use. Just figure out what you need through the measurement plan and then figure out on who can answer that or what can answer that. Then uh, this is uh, the, the bad guy in Doctor Who, uh, Daleks. And Daleks are just like killing everyone. But sometimes we have also to be like as, as Daleks, we have to go on the dark side of the the measurement plan where it's just like exterminate failure. Make sure that uh, you avoid any organization failure, client failure, self failure, technology failure, uh, failure to understand what is required, failure to follow logic, uh, failure to deploy. So once again, we go back to question and challenge everything because if you really understand, well, you won't have, you won't fail when it's trying to understand. So. Don't make any assumptions and just kill everything that is not working for you. And then not, don't forget that you are not alone. Not only that people can help you, but that also you need them. So it's, it's, it's really a, a balance of uh, bothering everyone to understand what your business needs and how you can help them reporting, but also sharing the knowledge so make sure that everyone has access to your measurement plan and that everyone is on board so this is the key takeaway is uh, data and google analytics is 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 an investment it needs time it needs effort it needs knowledge you need discipline and and you need to have someone that is responsible for it and that actually look that you have a sort of governance so you don't that the security, privacy and quality will be the three first things I will bother and, and make sure that you respect. Then um, in terms of digital analytics and what you measure, question everything you know and everything that matters, you need to find out what matters to the others. Basically understand your business and it happens more than, than, than it's, it should. <laughs> that a lot of business don't even know what are their actual uh, objective or that they just limit themselves because they actually don't have the data. Then create the measurement plan, which is the objective, the goals, the KPIs, the target and the segment, which is basically the translation of what you would need to be able to report on performance in, and having and, and derive actionable insights from that. And once you have the whole measurement plan, just prioritize things. So you make sure that you start with your, the, minimal, the minimum that you need, the minimal viable measurement plan. And then from there, by batches, you build and improve your analytics.
So thanks everyone for your time. Um, if you have any question, so you can contact uh, me through my email or answer the email you received for Travel Massive invitation or through LinkedIn or even um, you can also ask questions to Kirsty that, that she will pass along. And if you have questions now, don't be shy, just, just, just ask. Awesome, thanks Ben. So uh, as Ben just said, um, let's take some questions now. So if you have uh, a question uh, for me or Ben, just type it into the chat box below. Uh, I'll give you all a little moment to, uh, to do that if you like. Um, and we did get one question about um, recording the webinar. And yes, as usual, um, the, the webinar was recorded and it will be shared uh, with you all tomorrow, um, along with a link to a blog post um, on this topic. Um, and of course, the slides as well, so that you can go through those uh, when you're making your own measurement plan, I hope. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like you guys are just a little bit slow. You're not, you've not woken up. Uh, <laughs> I hope we didn't put you to sleep. Um, so it looks like you don't have any questions, but I, I, I'm sure some of you are actually going to think of questions uh, later on down the track when you're um, making your measurement plan. So um, if you think of anything else, um, or of course you just want some help with your digital marketing or analytics uh, from Ben, you can contact Ben at Benoit at inmarketingtrust.com.au or just reply to the email that got you here. So um, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure to sign up for our next webinars as well. So thanks again, Ben, and thanks everybody else for joining us. Thank you, everyone.